guys and welcome back to the Harmony tutorial series. I thought in this episode I might start to get into how I would go about making some animatable characters and uh, a good place as any to start with that is just how to make an animatable eye. So in this quick tutorial we're just going to look at how to make a simple animatable eye and what I'll do is expand on this to create a, a little bit more dynamic eye in the future. So first things first we're going to need at least a drawing to start with. And I'm going to go ahead and just rename that eye. All right. Then I'm going to take a uh, circle. You know, the shape of your eye is going to depend on your design. But I'm just going to go with a simple circle for this demo. And I'll just draw a circle here in the middle of my scene. Perfect. So there's the outline of my eye. Use black for the outline. I'm going to create a new color. Call that color, non-coincidentally, eye. And let's just make that kind of a light color. I don't like to do pure white. I don't like pure colors. I like to add a little bit of uh, something to it. So it's going to be this kind of like off-white kind of yellowy color here. And I'll fill my eye. Oh, using the correct tool, of course. I will fill my eye with that color. And there we go. We got the basis for our eye. Now I can select that. Choose my rotation tool and just recenter the pivot point there. And as a reminder, you can use the pivot. You can use the pivot tool. Sorry, the rotation tool or the transform tool to recenter your pivot point. But if you use the free transform tool, it won't be a permanent move. It'll be a temporary move. So to do a permanent move, you want to use the rotation or the transform tool. Anyway, so there's my eye. Perfect. Other necessary part of the eye is going to be the pupil. So I'm going to create a new drawing. Call that one pupil. Oh, spelled correctly, though. And add and close. And just select that first frame there. And I will use another circle to create this pupil. I'm not super creative with my shapes right now, but you can be if you so wish. So I'm going to create another circle, create a new color, call that new color pupil, and give it a, another color. I'm going to make it a bit of a green here, kind of an emerald eye. And I'll fill that again using my paint bucket tool. And I'll create one more circle, but this time instead of freehand drawing, I'm just going to select my existing pupil, copy it, paste it, recenter it there, and then just hold shift and alt, shrink it down, and then fill that with black to create the center of my pupil. And we'll add a little bit of a shine as well, just to get fun with it. So I'll freehand draw another circle here using my eye color, and then just fill that in by hand. All right, then I'll go back to my free transform tool, and there we've got our pupil and our eyeball, and I'll select my pupil, and again, reposition the pivot point there so it's in the center, because that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I've created the two major elements of my eye, and if I grab that, I can move it around, that's great. But of course, if I bring it over to the edge of the eye here, the pupil starts to come off the eyeball, which looks a little strange. It'd be good for us, if that pupil was mapped, or masked rather, to the edge of the eye. So that's going to be our next step. So I'll just recenter that there. All right, so next we're going to do the node view. And we can separate our elements out a bit here. Now we've got both these coming to our main composite, but what I'm going to do is copy and paste my composite to make a new composite and plug the eye elements into that just so that they're separated on their own. That's just a bit of housekeeping that I like to do as I go. The more you can keep things organized, the better your life's going to be. So next I'm going to select my eye and just hit control P to create an eye peg. And with that selected, go back to my camera view and make sure that the eye pegs pivot point is centered as well. Again, just more housekeeping. The more you do as you go, the less you have to remember to do later. And then I'll plug the top of my pupil element here into the bottom of the eye peg. So both the eye and the pupil are both attached to the eye peg. And what this means is that I can now, you know, move the eye if I need to, move the, poop, move the pupil if I need to. But if I select the peg, it'll move both at the same time. Helps keep things organized, easy to animate. So that's some good organization there. Now we're going to do some special effects modules magic to mask that eye, or to mask the pupil onto the eye. So first we need to create the mask. The easiest way to do that is just go to our node library, 
find our color override node, which you can do by just typing color, or start to type color into the uh, search box there. Then look for color override, looks like that. Drag it on into your node view. Then I'm going to grab a new string off the bottom of my eye, plug it in the top of the color override. Then with my color override selected, if I go to my layer properties window, just expand this out a bit so we have a bit more room. So I can tell this uh, module what colors I want to specifically look for. So first of all, I'm going to make sure I go over here and click on render selected colors only. This is where the most mistakes happen, guys. So make sure you have this tab selected, render selected colors only. Then this drop down menu, I want to render selected colors. Then I'm going to choose that eye color I made. And this is another great reason to name your colors, guys. Don't leave them color one, color two, color three. Name your colors as you go. So grab eye, hit this button, boom. Puts it over here into the render selected colors menu. I'll just shrink that window back a bit. So what that means now is that this color override is grabbing just that white eye color, which is the color we want to map our uh, pupil to. So that's step one. Step two is we need another module. So this time we need the cutter module. So I'm going to erase my search here and just type cut. And sure enough, the cutter module pops up. So I'll grab that, drag her down. All right. And this time, instead of drawing a new string, I'm just going to grab the existing string for the pupil and attach it to the right hand side of the cutter module. So again, another common mistake is to put it the wrong side. Make sure you attach it to the right hand side. That's the side that has a little dot in it there. All right, then just plug that into the composite, making sure it's in front of the eye. If I go to the camera view, nothing looks different. And if I drag this, nothing's happening different. All right, now I'm gonna drag the color override and attach that to the other side of the cutter. Release. And now if I go to the camera view, ah, nuts, our pupil's gone. But if I click on the pupil in my timeline, you can see a little square shows up. And if I drag that, oh, sure enough, there's our pupil. But it's not mapped on top of the white of the eye. It's mapped behind the white of the eye. So that's the opposite of what we want to have happen. Well, go back to my node view. Click on Cutter. And if I go to my Layer Properties window, you'll see there's a little checkbox that says Inverted. Well, I'll click that, and guess what happens? It inverts the eye, or it inverts the mask, rather. And now we're getting more what we want. The pupil is mapped to the eyeball, so we can move that around, animate it, it will stay where it's supposed to stay. One small issue though is, if I bring this right over to the edge, zoom in, you can see that the outside of the eye contour gets really thin there. You can see that the uh, the pupil kind of juts in a bit, and it gets, gets even clearer if I select the eye, and then select a drawing tool, say a select tool. So you can see that the pupil goes right sort of into the center of the eye contour there. And that's because uh, because of vectors, that white part of the eye goes right to the middle of the contour. That's where the blue line is there. So we need to make an adjustment. Otherwise, we're going to get this strange sort of thinning look every time the pupil gets to the side of the eye. So there's a few ways to, to, to handle that problem. But I find the easiest is just to do this. So we'll select our eye and go up here. And you want to select, it'll be where your contour editor is, so where the white arrow is. Click and hold on that, and go to Pencil Editor. All right, Release. So you got the Pencil Editor tool active. And then click on the contour for the eyeball. It'll turn red. You'll get a couple of nodes down here. For me, they're at the bottom. You may find them elsewhere. And you may actually have more than one node, or set of nodes, depending on how complicated your shape is. But if you've chosen a simple circle, you should just have one set like that. If I go down to the bottom, what these allow you to do is adjust the thickness of that contour. And you can see there's that line in the center again. So what I can do is drag this top one down towards that center line, and you notice it gets thinner. So the, uh, the white part gets bigger. But now our contour around the eye is thinner kind of overall, so I'm going to grab this bottom one and drag it out a bit. You know, ideally close to the amount that I dragged in the top node. So now we got some thickness on our eye again. Now if I zoom out a bit, go back to the pupil. 
Now you can see we don't have that thinness where the pupil hits the side of the eye. It appears to be sort of a solid amount of uh, space of the same size all the way through. So that's a quick way to solve that problem. One quick note though, if you are going to do this, don't drag that inner node all the way down to the, uh, the middle line. Always leave a bit of a buffer, just a little bit of space there. Because if you drag it all the way down, what I've noticed is that you get this really thin, do you see it? Like a pixels thin little line that separates your dark colors there. And even if I render this view, you'll see it's still there. You can see that really kind of haloed effect. And that's what happens when the line is right on top of that center uh, vector line there. So like I said, the easiest way to fix that is just select this and make sure you got just a few pixels width of buffer between the edge of the contour and that center line. And that should get rid of the problem. You can see it's gone now. It's a solid connection. Anyway, just extend all these elements out to the end of my scene here. And now we've got an animatable pupil that we can have move around on our eyeball. Set up some frames here, go over here, and over to the other side, and then back to the middle, add some auto tweens. And there it is. People animating side to side. Gives a bit of a 3D effect. And you can add to the 3D effect by maybe when your pupil gets over the edge, just to add a bit of a squash to it. That'll make it seem a bit more like it's rotating around the eyeball instead of just kind of flatly sliding side to side. So just add a bit of squash to it. It'll help, it'll help with the rounding out of the eye. Anyway, simple little eye animation. I'll stop this uh, tutorial here. But on the next one, what we'll do is uh, I'll show you how, how to add some blinks and maybe some expressions to your eyeball to make them a little bit more interesting, a little bit more, you know, expressive and dynamic. Until then, happy animating.